Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, it's Magic Brad, Synergy Cafe. You got your beverage of choice. Synergy Lifestyle Academy, Synergy Collaborative, Synergy this, that. I love the word. You got it. There we go. Aqua. <laughs> I've got my friend Ben, a.k.a. Benjamin Ritter. You there, Ben? I am here. How's it going? I did some poking around. I figure you're in Chi-Town. I am. Good. Good sleuthing. <laughs> I may not be for long, but I've been here my whole life. Really? Yeah. You born and raised, same spot? Uh, not this exact apartment, but nearby enough. Well, I've lived in I lived in this neighborhood for a good, I think, 13, 14 years, but grew up kind of like a 12, 15 minute drive away, but I tend to travel a ton. Uh, but so, did you did you stay there? Did you ever live someplace out of state? You know, just on long like longer trips, like a month and a half trips, but never really okay. moved moved. So might be coming up down the road. I, I'm in some planning stages talking to some real estate agents, but and, and looking at Austin right now, but Chicago has been home my whole life. You really vibe down there. I got my nieces down there and a magician actor friend of mine is down there. A lot of actors move down there. Austin's a pretty cool place. Yeah. So you got to come out. We'll do, we'll do this in person. It's right down 35 <laughs> W. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Um, I had a thought that came in and it vanished, but uh, we'll just get right into, are you married and got kids and all that kind of thing? Are you hanging out and waiting? Uh, Dayton. A partner that I've been seeing for a while, you know, that might ask me in a year that same question. We'll see. But my closest relationship right now is my cat, Seema, who, who I'm surprised isn't in this video right now, because whenever I talk out loud, she tends to just jump up and just make her appearance. She, she loves the spotlight. I'm all about that. These days of authenticity, if that's what happens, that's the way the world works. So I like that. Instead of a green screen background and stuff, this ain't no green screen here, boy. Yeah, I have a, a secret desire that she'll just get seen as some like online blooper and go viral and have a famous cat. Famous cat. I don't want to be famous, but I want my cat to be famous. Like every presentation that I give in in a workshop usually includes like some slide of my cat just to Perfect. see people Dr. react. Dr. Ben's cat videos. <laughs> yes. That's my next TikTok channel. I don't even have a TikTok. But. TikTok. I had to. I'm curious all the time, but TikTok to me is like, ah, oh, man. It's a little beyond me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's so many different platforms to play this game on. Well, Ben, like you, I've been in the in Minnesota most of my life. I did spend a couple of years in LA working on a project and just getting the heck out of Minneapolis. And then I spent a couple of years in Asheville, North Carolina, because me and my wifey wanted to experience that. But I spent the same uh, 53 years in the same house. 53 years in the same house. Then uh -huh. I got married. Kudos. <laughs> <laughs> on this <laughs> time because <laughs> you never know you know i've had my good bad and ugly but <laughs> now i got a good one so let's get into it a little bit and find out what it is you did i, I did some poking around and i the website is l what is it life yeah live for it? yourself consulting.com live for yourself uh, if you don't like typing that many words you can type in lfy consulting.com there you go well, these days, it it's almost doesn't matter what your domain is. It's how, how it gets found. You know, it's just kind of bizarre. It's good to have a, a recognized brand so people can find you if they resonate with who you are. But uh, typos and stuff, they, those are all, that's going to happen. I mean, Apple's got Apple. That's kind of a cool thing. I thought the Beatles had that first. Yeah, we were talking about this before in terms of like name recognition for, you know, SEO search and stuff. And I think there was one other Benjamin Ritter that was hitting the, hitting the Google search page and then he got arrested and then he really hit the pages and then I think he's gone. So I'm like the only doctor, only Benjamin Ritter, only Dr. Benjamin Ritter on the internet, easy to find. Um, and it was funny cause like a lot of the organic search from the, from the stuff I've been creating like content marketing and such, YouTube articles I've been writing, events I've been hosting, have been really helpful in drawing in clients and prospects and building that trust. And I realized I didn't never had a, a business listing on Google. So literally like two weeks ago, I finally got one up. <laughs> So it's just funny how, you know, I had a couple of people find me just through organic searches, which is rather new because I do a lot of like events and content. And that's how I tend to fill up my kind of funnel and find my clients and my network and stuff. But then once I kept hearing about people finding me due to organic search, I was like, I need to have, why don't I have this? And it was just a little, a little checkbox. It was really easy to create. And now I have, a, you know, some reviews and such and to improve potential, right? Organic search. 
Well, on a, on a marketing conversation, I've got a different philosophy with it all. And that is you can try and, you know, have your own domain name. You can build on Facebook, but if that goes away, so do you. If you can try and build on Google, if that goes away, so do you. Um, you can even have, have your own domain name. But if for some reason that expires and someone else gets it or Google or GoDaddy or whatever says no, you're gone. So all you can really build is you, your own personality. Yep. Because when you go to search for Tony Robbins, I don't think you go to Robbins Institute International. I bet you just type in Tony Robbins and you find him. So just work on yeah, getting I've, Ben. I've had this conversation with a few people because I know a couple of big like YouTube stars and a couple of big podcasting stars. And I'm like, what happens if that disappears? And then I know some people that are like, just build your email list, have your email. What happens if that disappears? Right. And so that's why I've built such a strong network in Chicago through my in-person events. At least that's how, that's how I built my brand. I built my brand off of in-person events and networking. And oh. now because of that's been, become so solid over the years, I only really use LinkedIn and then now virtual events. Well, the reality is, is like what, what I tell people when they say, how do we get a hold of you? What's your email address? I say, just Google the keyword magic, Brad, and any other keyword that you are thinking about. Because I've got stuff all over the internet. So if you want to know about Glitter. yoga or whatever, whatever you put I wanna, in there. I want to type in magic Brad glitter and see what I find. I bet you find me. <laughs> I, I bet I do. In fact, I'll bet you do because glitter is part of the event planning world. And I've got like a glow in the dark parties and stuff like that. So I'm curious. I'd type it in and figure it out. I mean, I'm, <laughs> the lovely aspect of the internet. Magic Brad Glitter. Magic Brad Marketing. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, 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 from Pinterest. Dun, dun, dun. Cool. Yeah, not that much pops up, by the way. If you want to do something with Magic Brad Glitter, there's a huge opportunity there for more <laughs> search, optimiz search engine optimization. <laughs> there we go. Well, let's get into kind of what you do. I kind of conveyed a little bit. It's about helping um, entrepreneurs and solopreneurs to be successful in this whole crazy thing. And I'm about that too. I've been self-employed all my life. I had a job out of high school. I started doing magic when I was a little kid, all through grade school into high school. I was making money in high school doing that. And then people said, you should get a job. And I did. I got a job for three years, got laid off. And I said, where's my gold watch? I thought I had a job here. So yeah. I decided to be self-employed. So I'm a big advocate of self-employment, entrepreneurship, solopreneurship. Share with us how you do that, how you help people be that way. Yeah, to your point, by the way, having multiple like lines of revenue stream, like just being able to sustain yourself, knowing that you can is a huge confidence boost is also just a nice little safety net. And entrepreneurship can create that for you. Solopreneurship, right, is fairly easy nowadays. You can, I mean, I created a, I created a supplement within six months and got it to market, right, for, for $1,500. And like I've, you know, you can write a book for free. <laughs> you can start a service-based business for free. And all of a sudden now you've built this, this stream of income that can sustain you de depending on whatever happens, right? A global pandemic or, you know, a, re a recession, you lose your job, et cetera. Um, so I have 10 years of coaching experience. I have a background in organizational leadership, healthcare, entrepreneurship, and coaching. And for the past four years, I've been solely focused on working with uh, entrepreneurs, business professionals, and executives that feel stuck. They feel potentially underutilized. They feel like they're in work that isn't really meaningful to them. I help them create a career that they love. And I mainly work with three different types of clients. I work with the, the business professional executive that wants to pivot into a new industry where they feel more aligned. I work with the you know, professional executive that wants to become an entrepreneur. And I work with the, the entrepreneur or executive that just wants to manage where they're currently at and figure out why they're stuck and what's not working and basically find solutions to what they perceive as their problems personally and professionally. Um, and Please. You're yeah, sort of helping people sort of adjust the sails, so to speak, rather than build the boat and start racing it. Yeah, my, my specialty is like gaining that clarity initially or wherever they're at right now. And so that's defining their, their core values, the why behind what they do, and then also like how to actually get there, the how and the what and the when. So the actual processes, the goals, the action, the steps, and how to get out of their own way. So a lot of times that involves diving into some mental frames that have been built up over their years of programming, right? Of sitting behind a desk or just being that, right? A lack of confidence. Um, then we move into right building that, that confidence, diving into their, 
inner critics, you know, what's really holding them back, how to actually develop the hard skills they need to actually do the things that they are planning to do, the goals that they're setting for themselves. It's one thing to say, I want to go to the moon, but okay, do you know how to do that? Do you know how to actually take action to get there? And then also prioritizing that, creating some intentions around their life to, to take control, right? To, to create the environment that's going to serve them, to invest in the right relationships, to distance themselves from the wrong relationships, and to, to really basically create an aligned lifestyle that relates to everything that they truly care about and want to do professionally in their life. Well, that sounds super, super valuable because I'm, I'm 63 and I've got what I call entrepreneurial ADD because I'm always looking at different opportunities and things. And uh, it's ch a challenge because all of a sudden you see something that, uh, cool, I could be selling that. And then you realize that that isn't really aligned with me and I'm trying to push that thing and it's just not going for some reason, but why don't people want to buy this widget? It's because it's not in alignment. You know, it's not, not connected right. And uh, I've experienced that a lot. So what you're offering or what you're providing is I think really helpful is kind of getting real clear on what you actually want before you start taking action on it. Um, are you familiar with like the secret and the law of attraction and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, and I'll, I'll relate that back. Well, yeah, I'll relate that back to this idea of intention, right? Are you living intentionally? What are you focused on on a daily basis? Where are you investing your time? And I, very often, right, we, we look at something we want to do and we feel overwhelmed by it. So we don't do anything. And we don't realize that we can just take small little steps to build that level of attention and attraction, like you mentioned, to really build some momentum and see some results. Well, that's the whole key is momentum. And again, uh, one of my downfalls, and I keep talking about my downfalls, that's probably not a good thing to talk about, but I'm, I'm conscious of it, is it's like the magnifying glass where you take the sun and you burn the wood and you get off focus. So you're doing this, all of a sudden you move it, that other piece cools off. You, you lost all your momentum. So that's a big challenge, I think, with a lot of people is that shiny object thing. And they go and they shift in gears, again, because it's not aligned with what they actually their actual purposes and that intention yeah, and that, changes. that could happen for so many different reasons what pops to like to front of my mind is a failure right a rejection um, and so all of a sudden now you you forget why you're doing something because like what you do and how you do it is nowhere near as important as why you do it because if you know what you stand for like for example i want to impact people and help them create a career that they love awesome Let's say tomorrow my coaching practice just explodes for some reason and I can't operate it anymore. There are so many other ways that I can do that. And it, it, there are so many other ways that I can work with individuals to help them find professional happiness and success. And it could be working for an organization. It could be creating, you know, it could be write, writing instead of coaching. It could be creating a product. You know, so there's, there's so many different ways that I can live my values on a day-to-day -day basis and how I actually connect the meaning of what I'm doing to what I believe is important is all in my perception. It's all in like wh what I think about what I'm doing. And yeah, if, if we perceive failure as a failure um, of our actual values and our why, then we've already lost. But if we see failure as actually a learning opportunity for us to then keep working towards the things we care about, then we've won. And when we found a way to find happiness in, in everyday moment, like, out, like outside of external influences and forces. Yeah, I've uh, heard the term fail forward. You know, as long as you're going forward, it's really not a failure. It's just a step that wasn't uh, in perfect alignment. At least you move forward. You know, it's, it's like uh, when they do go to the moon, they're always adjusting that, that flight pattern to get there. So you just, as long as you're going towards your destination, it's a little bit of an easier thing to do. I like the way, you're, the way you're talking about keeping people on that why thing. Because the reality is, is if you get all that rejection from all these people, if you know your why, it's going to pull you, it's going to inspire you, mm -hmm. draw you through it all. And all that negativity is just going to go to the side. So that, is that kind of what you do is kind of go through like a coaching, consulting situation and kind of find out what their true why is? Yeah, because I am kind of a values geek. I did my dissertation on, on congruence and values and senior executives in healthcare. Yeah, I believe in values so much and living an aligned lifestyle. So I believe in living an easy lifestyle, right? And, and by easy, I don't mean that you just lounge about and don't do anything. I, I, I mean like creating a life around yourself that serves you. So if I care about something, my environment, my relationships, my job, like everything that I'm doing, the, the, the information I intake on a daily basis is related to the things that I actually care deeply about. 
And so I'm not fighting through conflict and dissonance and stress and like all that stuff is minimized because I've created a life for myself that is easy and that serves me. Um, and when we were talking about like getting rejected and such, I love to play a game with clients. I try to give them like a number, like try to get 20 no's this week. And then you can find how many yeses did you get out of that 20. And then you can say, okay, it took, it took 11 no's right now with your pitch, with your message right now to get a yes. So we can work on your pitch to see if we can, you know, minimize that number. But you know that if you get up to 11, a yes is right around the corner. And so we, you know, you kind of reframe that no, that rejection, that failure as basically just leading you towards that opportunity and success for yourself. Well, what, what I've found, like doing these videos and things, when I shift my focus to whatever, because for a while I was focused on yoga and travel, those are the types of interviews I end up starting getting. It, so it, it, it's aligned with whatever I'm doing. And right now I'm doing more affiliate marketing, work from home, solopreneur kind of stuff. And that's probably why you popped into my universe, into my vortex. And it's, it's going that direction. It's because mm -hmm. you're taking you're action forward. though. It's like, you're, you're talking yeah. about what you're doing. You're putting yourself out there with what you're doing. Your, your messaging is on point. And so all of a sudden, if you start doing those things, if you start, if you start actually accepting like who you want to be and what you want to put out into the world, then everything around you is it's going to have a ripple effect and you know it could be attraction and the energy that you're that you're dispersing but it could also be like your intention and the fact that you're talking about what you what you want to do with people that you're reaching out to people that are in that field and so it does like back to this idea of momentum right you just see this exponential curve this growth um, as you are consistent and as your messaging is consistent and as how you define yourself is consistent yeah, and these days it, it could be that uh, spiritual universe vibe talking, or it could be the algorithms of how you're communicating on the internet, what words are doing what. And I'm assuming that when you're talking to some of the older CEOs and trying to get them off of the, you know, the old dog, new tricks kind of thing. And they, because like, here's an example, I'm assuming you probably have to work with some people with your events because this Corona thing, my events came to a screeching halt. So now I got to figure out how to do this on the internet. And if someone is an advocate of live events, I don't want to do this Zoom stuff. They're going to have to. How do you work with those people that are stubborn? I mean, it was, in terms of events, it was a hard pivot to virtual. There was no, like we couldn't, right? There was a pandemic. There's no, you can't be in person. Maybe now things are opening up and people are meeting, but I went all virtual with them. Uh, most of like the consultant work, I luckily didn't have anything booked in terms of like in-person workshops at the time. So that wasn't impacted. But when people are stubborn, it's not about, changing their mind it's about helping them understand why they're stubborn and what they truly want to achieve and what they care about and it's just working through it i think too often we just you know when someone's stubborn in real life right you just there's conflict and it's like brunt force against brunt force and you just hit each other and it's like just this explosion and nobody wins but as a coach when someone is like stubborn and like all this there's this huge force your coach just goes like walks around that it walks around it takes a look at it gets curious about it maybe pokes it a little bit, pokes it again a little bit, but not enough to make it explode. You know, maybe like lifts one finger up and like, oh, examines that again. And it's this process of really trying to understand the emotions and feelings of the client um, and then reframing them. So this stubbornness then, you know, evolves into whatever that client truly wants for themselves. Well, that's refreshing to hear because that's, I, I'm somewhat impatient because I'm, I'm a results-based kind of guy. I like to see stuff happen and then realizing that sometimes it doesn't happen as fast as I think it should. Like, I wouldn't make be a good farmer. If I would plant all the corn, I'd go, come on, let's have some corn here. <laughs> you have to wait. You have to poke and, like you said, poke and prod, and eventually things will change. You can. Well, behaviors didn't just, you know, occur overnight. Your behaviors are a product of all of our programming that are inside our minds and even inside our body because memories are stored all over our body. And so you can't expect them to just immediately change. There could be after poking and prodding and examining, right, one day where you wake up and all of a sudden they're changed because you've been focused on this, this idea, this concept for so long and you've been surrounded your life with it and it, it finally clicked. But, but it takes time. It has to take time. And I think that's, that's one thing a lot of clients you know, develop that understanding of is that like, okay, I want to become this, but this is where I am. Let's accept myself where I am today. And then once I accept that, I can figure out steps I need to take to get to this other, other version of me, right? So if you come to me looking for clarity, you come to me with this, you know, an imposter syndrome or doubt in yourself, so you can't take action. You come to me, you can't prioritize and you procrastinate. 
it's not like we're going to flick a switch and you're going to be this entirely different person. It's we're going to start accepting the fact that you are who you are. And that's mm -hmm. wonderful, right? You are who you are because of everything that's occurred in your life. You procrastinate for a reason, right? Maybe you're a perfectionist. Maybe you just resent what you're trying to do for a living. You don't truly really understand why it's important. So it's like, and then so let's examine that. Let's accept who you are and the reasons behind it. And because with that acceptance, we can then work towards solutions that actually work for you, not what you think you should do. Got it. Um, with your workshops and things like that, like we got this uh, pandemic lockdown thingy. I'm assuming that before you did all these workshops, did you also do like, um, like retreats and things out of the country? No, I've, I've spoken at corporate retreats in the, throughout the United States, nothing international at this point in time. Okay. Uh, and then I did some stuff like internal and organizations within Chicago. But the, the virtual workshops and events, those are actually things that I host myself usually too. Not, not the virtual ones, but I'm talking about the live ones. Live yeah, so, I, so there was, uh, there was a couple different like buckets. There were the ones that I put on. I had an event series at a couple different event series that I put on Chicago in person. And okay. then there were the ones that I'd be brought in for, right, with organizations and such to work on like leadership development and motivation. Right. So I'm assuming when you get down to Austin, I'm assuming that's going to happen, then you'd be uh, rekindling those workshops and in-person events. Probably. I hope so. I get a lot out of it. The, the virtual event platform, though, has been pretty incredible. Uh, because So one, like organizations need content right now. So I've gotten opportunities that I just wouldn't have had before. And like the amount of opportunities are kind of insane right now. It's like three mm -hmm. or four speaking engagements for other, other organizations a month. Uh, and then the the plat platforms are also looking to promote other events because they need to, sh to show that they have content. So then I'm getting free promotion for my virtual events. And then I'm getting reach that I never had before because I, I didn't have access to that audience. And then I've also been on platforms that are global. So now I've had global audiences. And so actually everything that's been happening right now with the pivot to virtual events has been pretty spectacular for my brand. Well, this is a sidebar, but do you, what platform do you use? Is it Zoom? Yeah, purely Zoom. I've I've used a couple different ones through different organizations, but they've all they haven't been as easy. Zoom has been like. Have you seen Streamyard? So no, not yet. Check out Streamyard. I'm thinking about pivoting to that only because it's a little more simple. Uh, I'm it write does it down. similar kind of stuff. It's like Streamyard, and there's the, their logo is a duck. <laughs> I don't know what I mean, that there's is. going to be, there has to be innovation, right? People are just like Zoom fatigue. You probably heard those keywords lately. It's people are just so sick of being on Zoom. And yes and no in my mind, but I, I do think there's room for innovation. Like there's a, a 3D virtual startup incubator competition or something this week. Like, I don't know how they're going to do it. I'm curious. I think they're doing like a, a Sims kind of environment where you're like this character that walks around and engages and interacts, which is kind well, of cool. That's just it. People are getting very innovative with all this stuff. I've, uh, I had some systems set, set up with my event stuff where I would do event marketing on Facebook and Eventbrite that then took all those leads and put them into a MailChimp and it put them in an automated sequence for my March event that I do my big event. So I did multiple little events leading up to the big event and it worked really good until er, all the events stopped. So now I'm working on trying to do that virtually with webinars and all that. Yeah, I have a, a couple of good entrepreneur friends in the city of Chicago who had a, a brick and mortar, uh, that's called the Laboratory Collective. And they basically do science camps for kids, but like really innovative ones. So they had, you know, a zombie apocalypse one, they had a Harry Potter one, and they're, they're teaching kids science, but these cool, like, you know, fire bombs and stuff and all this all these things and they everything right just one of their biggest money makers the summer camps just ended and so they've pivoted to youtube they're trying to do this in the virtual environment they're trying to make pack care packages and send them to the kids it's really tough um, but they did mention that like now they're able to compete against some of the bigger names and bigger brands because there's now a global audience that's interested in them if they can get if they can get in front of everyone people are searching online right now for activities to do Yep, um, it's a it's a weird world because, like I said, uh, it's broadcasting, not narrowcasting, and now the the world is your oyster, so to speak. But it's also everybody else's, so there's a lot of noise out there. So how do you find your own little spot and dominate it? And it's a challenge because you know you're doing it on YouTube, you're not the only YouTuber. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's where that's where the understanding of what you truly care about comes into play. Understanding of who your target client is, and then how exactly. they how they talk, like 
So you literally need to know what they say in their head about the problem that you solve or whatever they're trying to look for. It doesn't matter what you think the solution is. And I'm sure you know this, or you probably preach it, but we're just talking about it. Uh, you need to know exactly what they're looking for. And I just had a call with a, with a good friend, past client about how, you know, his new messaging and he kind of showed me his new website. And I'm like, you're selling, you're selling your solution and your format. You're not selling their pain and what they search for. And so it's not going to resonate. Right. And so it, th that's so important when you're trying to stop people and get them to click something. Well, especially when you said exactly, because these days it needs to be exactly how they spell it. You can't yeah. spell, you know, you, <laughs> you can't spell or O-R when you mean O-A-R. <laughs> yeah, I, I constantly say, so one of my favorite books ever as an entrepreneur, I think it launched me into like the literature of entrepreneurship and even before I launched the business and when I was just studying the field was the artist, Art of Start by Guy Kawasaki. And there's one piece of advice that sticks out so clearly in my mind about that. And it was don't get cute with your names. Like really try, I mean, in cute, I mean, don't misspell things. Uh, and a lot of people have been really successful misspelling things and getting cute with spelling. But in this day and age, I mean, do you want to fight the battle where people are going to be spelling your name wrong and typing things in and searching for you and not finding you? Or do you want to be cute and have that brand? I think it's a, it's a battle. Exactly. I mean, on the, on the top of the funnel, as they say, in the big distance, you can, you got to use words that people are going to be typing in. But then once they understand the word, they type it in like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk. I don't know how to, you know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, yes? Yeah. He goes by Gary V. So now you type in Gary V and you find it because I know it already. But I wouldn't type in Gary V if I was looking for some media mogul. <laughs> I don't even know what Gary V does, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Swears a well, lot. <laughs> he, he made a lot of money uh, in the wine business. And, yeah. uh, and then he launched a media company and he wrote some pretty good books. And now he yeah. is kind of like a personal professional development guru. It has a media company. Yeah, it's, it's weird how it happens, you know? Yeah, I love, I want to see more backstories. I think understanding where people started and their failures and the fact that it did take them five to 10 years to, to see, you know, success and then another five or 10 years for them to be where you're seeing them today. I think too often we forget that when we're watching the Gary V's or the Tony Robbins, you know? The Joe Rogan. Yeah, or Joe, Joe Rogan. Rogan started as a martial artist doing comedy then got him in finally into Fear Factor, then into UFC, and now he's got his Rogan podcast. Mm -hmm. It's not a straight line, man. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Well, this is cool. Um, ben, is there anything that you have that you can maybe offer people? Do you do like a 20-minute uh, like consultation or anything like that to get to know who you are and what you do and all that that people can find? Yeah, there's a, a bunch of stuff. So you can, you can sign up for a free clarity call. We'll talk for like 45 minutes to an hour just to gain clarity and where, you know, where you're feeling stuck and give you some immediate value. And if there's an interest in terms of a fit for a program, we'll talk about programs. I host a ton of free virtual events. You're more than anyone's welcome to come join them. And on my website, I have a little enter your email and download a free ebook on create a career you love. So it's a ton of exercises that you can answer for yourself to immediately start working uh, towards a career that you love. And that website is? liveforyourselfconsulting.com. That's easier to remember than the L F Y live for yourself. Yeah. Consulting. Mm -hmm. Easy breezy. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I, I don't know how long you've gone here. I think we've got about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, something like that. And um, who knows? I may come down to visit. You know, I may get down to Austin before you do. <laughs> well, I hope we do get to see each other in person one day. It'll That'd be, be fun. pretty fun. If you ever want to do another one of these, like if you've got your uh, workshops and stuff coming up, I love doing these things like announcing, a, a, even if it's a virtual event these days, you know, pre-promoting an event saying, hey, this is happening at, uh, you know, July 15th at 2 p.m., blah, 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 all that stuff. Let me know. We can do that together. Yeah, I'd love that. Thank you. Coolio. Well, Ben, appreciate you taking the time. And yeah, appreciate, appreciate you as well. Thank you, sir. And by the way, let me know if there's anything that I can do for you, please. Share Synergy Cafe. I shall. I will get you the links out soon. Okay. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Bye.